Hello and welcome to Ecoholics. In this video, we will understand our last difficulty, that's the fifth one. Now, this difficulty students generally face when they indulge into economics. I hope you have seen the last four. If not, after this video, you can watch that. Now, the most important thing in economics you'll encounter with is models. Generally, you find a lot of models given by economists. They are contradictory. They're not like f not closer to the real life. The most important thing is models are the powerful tool. But if you take all those models on their face value, you will struggle to understand the concepts behind it. Since 1776, we study economics rigorously. After that, we find a lot of models which are irrelevant right now in the present situation, but we still study those. Like for example, J.B. Say's classical economist model, major theory is supply creates its own demand. That has no use at all in 2024 or in 21st century, but still we study. There's a reason behind that. But if you take all those models at their face value, you will not understand this subject's reality. They want to give you the story of both sides so that you can understand which one is better and which one is for the betterment of the economy. The reason is we take economic models, economic models generally made up of a real life story or lessons converted into models. But in those models, sometimes the real life things are missing. So that is why if you take as it is, you will struggle in understanding. We'll take one example and to understand. So this is the fifth problem where you focus on models over reality. So here are two keywords, models, but over reality, you have to understand that in every circumstances, every model you have to correlate with the real things. We'll see one example when we discuss the solutions. These are the solution. Number one is critical thinking. Now that's what I was telling you since the beginning of this video that critically you have to think. It means you have to question what that model actually provides. Now in growth and development or in development economics, we have two models. One is balanced growth model and another one is unbalanced growth model given by Nux and given by Hirschman. You need to understand the difference between these two models. Now, you know, when you read balanced growth model, you'll find that this model is very much like imaginative. We can't implement balanced growth model given by Nux in the real life because we have limited resources. If we focus everything on like almost on a similar type, suppose for example, we take primary sector, we take secondary sector and tertiary sector, and we allot all three sectors equal amount of money in the budget. They will not grow equally. So that is why sometimes you have to apply your mind that balanced growth model is sometimes not working, but still in your textbook, it is mentioned. People study. Then you study unbalanced growth model, then you realize that growth cannot be balanced. After India got independence, the major focus was on providing food security. If suppose Indian government allocated all the resources equally to agriculture, manufacturing and services, India was struggling. I can say, I can bet you 100% of the time that India must have struggled if government would have done that. The reason is very simple. Some models, if you take it on your face value, if you do not critically think about that, that's a problem. Another question. In the first five-year plan, 1951, India adopted Harrod domer model. If you read Harrod domer model, it is clearly written that this model is for developed capitalist economy. Then why India adopted in 1951? I made a full video on that Harrod domer model. You can watch that. Link I will give you in the description. But why India adopted? There must be some reason behind it. So if suppose our policymaker would have read that it is for capitalist developed economy, they would have not even looked at once. So the reason is very simple. If you take it on as it is, you will struggle. So you have to question, you have to critically think. Next is current events. When you see any economics related model and you do not connect with the current related things, World economy, global economy faced 1929 Great Depression. Then they faced another crisis in 2008, that is global financial crisis. In the global financial crisis, almost similar thing happened, but on a different platform, in a different sector. So it means 
it is very very vital to study any event if you see asian financial crisis if you see india's balance of payment crisis in 1990 if you do not connect those events with the current related aspects you will be able to understand those models because what are models they are based on real life incidents so if you do not correlate you will struggle in understanding these uh, event or models last is focus on underlying principles now every model has certain kind of principles now according to you if you see that classical economics must be removed from the textbook but this should not be the case because if you don't understand classical economics then you wouldn't be able to understand the keynesian economics and that is where so underlying concept is very very vital so that world should not repeat the same mistake economics should not repeat the same mistake and that is where you understand the underlying principles like herat domer model is depending on the capital output ratio that's very important and trying to achieve that knife edge equilibrium on the same lines if you see other models dependent on technologies some dependent on agriculture if you see international economics they are dependent on absolute advantage then comparative advantage then extra role in factor endowment so there are several several development so you have to understand the underlying principle if you see international economics started with if you see the theory it started with mercantilism what mercantilism said that promote export restrict imports if you see the recent news given by united kingdom what they are saying that you come to uk you study in uk and then go don't look for job in uk can you correlate with mercantilism it means you come you give economy the fees that you are submitting to our education institution you take education and then don't eat up the employment of people living in united kingdom again if you see uh, the wave from 2016 us election donald trump and all you see protectionist wave people are talking about atmanirbhar bharat countries are thinking out becoming independent in terms of resource in terms of trade the reason is simple if you don't correlate so you start understanding international economics number one is mercantilism what they said promote export restrict import it means the money should come in but money should not go out then adam smith came and told the world that if you trade both will gain so you are expert in one thing other person is ex expert in another thing they both should collaborate and both will gain this is collaboration then ricardo came ki even if you are not expert in one thing still you can trade because you are producing better than or efficiently than other for example you know that india can produce a good amount of clothes but still india imports from bangladesh because that becomes cheaper so that's comparative advantage although india is good in food as well as clothing in comparison to bangladesh but still we trade that's comparative advantage given by ricardo then haberler came with the opportunity cost theory he said ke opportunity cost is important opportunity cost of producing cloth or food product so if you if your country needs food you should not produce cloth you trade cloth and you produce food and you produce food and gain expertise so that you can export food and with that money you can import cloth then extra role in came and they said that it depends on factor endowment like if i want to export oil but i don't have oil then what will i do so what india do is india take oil from middle east countries we refine and we send them back so we are expert in refineries reliance industry we are expert in refineries and they are expert in exploration simple india has four, fifth largest coal reserve but we don't have technology to extract that coal so there are certain circumstances you have to understand while understanding the underlying principle of the model i hope you understand this video i hope you understand how to approach economics to succeed in this subject because it's not limited to textbook only if you have any doubt any concern any question you can consult one to one with me i have given my whatsapp number in the description i hope you like this video uh, don't forget to give the thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe at ecolis thank you so much have a nice day